Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Thursday the 5th of December 2013 and this is a follow-up video to my earlier video about Dark Skywatcher 74 Tree of Might and his videos uh, about these uh, mystery objects that he was supposedly tracking through his uh, telescope uh, a few nights ago. Now he's really um, laid it on thick uh, with, with this uh, video and he's made several videos including this one those aren't satellites NASA Mr Sulu warp 9 now enhanced images and if we have a look at his channel uh, we can see that uh, he's actually uploaded quite a few uh, videos he's really trying to cash in on uh, on making something out of uh, what it isn't okay We've got this video here which uh, also uh, looks at the update. Two UFOs appear to be docking. Um, we've also got uh, this one here. NASA satellite defense grid possibly identified or UFOs. And uh, what else have we got? Um, the chase part two tracking these objects. Now this was part of the original video. And I find it interesting that um, the the video that was nearly three hours long, which uh, pretty much told the whole story, which is where I got involved and actually um, positively identified these objects for him, he's either removed this video or made it private. Um, but that's okay, Dark Sky Watcher, because I've already downloaded the video. I already have a copy of it, so um, as I do whenever you upload a new video where you make uh, claims like this, uh, first thing I do is download it because we know by now that this is what you do. You know, you, you upload these videos, you make all these crazy claims, you, uh, you post stolen images like the image of Saturn that you uh, stole from the Singapore Observatory this time last year. And then when you get caught out, you remove your videos. But you see, we're a step ahead of you, Dark Sky Watcher, because we save your videos as soon as you post. And we also take screenshots of the description area of your video so that when you go and change them like you do, or you change the description, the title like you do, we already have a copy. Okay, so now back to these four objects that are supposed to be part of a NASA satellite defense grid, which uh, apparently destroyed Comet Ison or whatever Comet Ison really is supposed to be in, in, in your mind. Now let's take a look at this. We're back into Starry Night and over the past while, maybe few months, um, Dark Sky Watcher has taken a liking to filming the Orion Nebula and it's quite understandable because the Orion Nebula is quite spectacular. But what he's discovered is that when he's locked on to the Orion Nebula, and I'll start this playing while I'm talking, while he's locked on to the Orion Nebula, he's been noticing that these strange objects come into view. And if you look on the right hand side, you can see one coming into view now. And they seem to cut right through the Orion Nebula as he's watching. And what are these mystery objects? Well, Anybody that's got a satellite dish on the side of their house so that they can watch satellite TV will know where those signals come from. They come from communication satellites. And those communication satellites are parked in Earth orbit in a geosynchronous orbit so that as the Earth turns, the satellite is orbiting at the same rate that the Earth turns. Now this means that unlike the satellites that we're more familiar with, the ones that uh, you can see that cross the sky, they look like a, a little star but travels across the sky in a straight line, these geosynchronous satellites um, actually follow the, the Earth and you can't actually see them moving um, unless you're looking through a telescope and you're zoomed right in. Um, because these objects actually turn at the same rate that the Earth turns. So you're not going to notice them unless you're uh, zoomed right up as we see here. Now this is exactly what Dark Sky Watcher was seeing when he had his telescope locked on the Orion Nebula on the 30th of November. Here are four communication satellites. Echo Star 17, Anik F1R, ANIC G1 and 
ANIC F1 for communication satellites. You can Google these names and you can read all about them. They're fixed in position and um, they're always there because they're geosynchronous satellites. Um, the one thing that will change is their apparent relative positions to each other as you're looking from any uh, point um, where you can see them on the Earth because like any uh, satellite um, they're not in a perfectly circular orbit around the Earth, they're in an elliptical orbit and that means that sometimes they're at perigee which means closest point to the Earth and sometimes they're at apogee which means furthest point to the Earth so sometimes they're higher and sometimes they're lower and because of that and because of the observing location they will appear to slightly change their positions in relation to each other but just like the satellite the communication satellite that your satellite dish is pointing at on the side of your house you'll notice that your satellite dish does not automatically uh, change its position to track the satellite across the sky so the point being is that um, you know the satellite that your satellite dish is pointing to doesn't move yes it moves higher and it moves lower but it doesn't move left and right now back to starry night and what we're seeing here we're seeing these four satellites crossing the field of view why are they moving I just said that these geosynchronous satellites don't move well the reason that they appear to be moving is because our view or simulated view of dark sky watchers telescope is actually locked on to the Orion Nebula and of course as the earth turns all of the stars and the planets and the Sun appear to move across our sky of course they don't it is the earth turning so when you have a telescope or oh, there goes one of those satellites just cut through from the top to the bottom okay so when you have a nice reasonable size telescope as dark sky watcher has now uh, purchased it has a motor drive on it so that you can lock onto objects so that it'll, it'll track them across the sky in this case he's locked onto Orion this means that the stationary satellites appear to be moving across the field of view but they're not okay now if instead we we turn off the tracking and all I need to do is shift the field of view and we're no longer locked onto Orion um, we see that our field of view doesn't change and instead Orion is actually moving now this is because of the rotation of the Earth now this brings out some very interesting points about Dark Sky Watch's claims he claimed that he was tracking these objects he wasn't tracking them at all all he did was turned off the automatic tracking on his telescope which meant that Orion moved out of view and all of the stars were going past because of the Earth was turning but the satellites remained within the field of view of his telescope because as the Earth turned, just like the satellite dish on the side of his house, they were still pointing at the same satellites. These satellites aren't going anywhere. If he goes out tonight and points his telescope at exactly the same place, they'll be right there, just as they were on the 30th of November, and they will be tomorrow night and the night after that. Now, let's step this up a bit because this gets really interesting. I'm going to turn on the orbits of just one of these satellites just as a, as a track so we can see that's the blue line you see right and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock onto one of these stars in Orion let's pull it back there and we can see our satellites are moving out of view and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the time units to minutes so that we can speed this up and we can see that I've got the date set to 30th of November, it's 1.06am, it's his uh, Dark Sky Watcher 74's location in Kingman, Arizona. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see a bit more of the sky. There are our, are our four satellites that uh, Dark Sky Watcher claimed that he was tracking. So now I'm going to step this forward one minute at a time and we're going to see what happens we've already seen a cluster of four satellites go through so what happens if I step this forward one minute at a time and remember we're locked onto Orion 
Okay, there are another couple of satellites, Echo Star 11, Echo Star 10. Here come three more. Now he's been claiming in his videos that he's been tracking hundreds of these objects, these mysterious objects cutting through the Orion Nebula. Yep, he sure has their satellites. Let's keep going. I'm sure you get the idea anyway. What Dark Sky Watcher is doing is being very deceptive. He's filming satellites, geosynchronous satellites, through his telescope and claiming that they are anything but. And why? Because it's good for views. And good for views means, in his case, because he's monetized his channel, more money. Because he's making money off his videos. Which is why you are subjected to watching advertisements before you can watch his BS videos. Now look at this, we've got five satellites in this one. And uh, by now you'll have the, uh, the idea that um, through this track, and let me zoom out some more, I've got, by the way I've imported the whole catalogue of listed satellites into Starry Night. By default there are only a limited number of satellites imported into Starry Night because as you can imagine when you've got 40,000 objects loaded into Starry Night, it tends to slow the program down. So they only load up the, the brightest objects that uh, you would normally see with your eyes crossing the sky. But, I mean, look at all these labels. If, the further out that I, I go, you'll see that some of the labels drop off. If I go in closer, you'll see new ones appear. So as I'm zoom, zoomed out, we don't actually see all of the labels. So all we're seeing in Dark Sky Watch's videos of these mysterious objects that he claims are anything but, they're satellites, they're communication satellites, and as I say, you can look them up. I've given the details, I'll put them in the description area. You can Google them, you can check them out, you can get the coordinates from certain websites, and you can set up your telescope, you can point your telescope at them, and you can see them for yourself. If you are in a location, where they are visible in your sky. I won't see them from here in New Zealand because they are geosynchronous and obviously um, they can be seen from Arizona but they can't be seen from New Zealand. Okay, But for anyone who is um, in that area or in the United States you will, will be able to see these satellites very easily with the, um, with the right coordinates if you look through a telescope. So there we have it, Dark Sky Watcher exposed again He's using videos of satellites and claiming that they are all sorts of things from a, uh, a NASA defense system. Um, NASA satellite defense grid possibly identified or UFOs. He's calling them UFOs. He's claimed that they shot down Comet Ison. All great for views, but not very honest. If you are a subscriber of Dark Sky Watcher 74 Tree of Might or one of his viewers, you should be aware by now that he is lying to you. He has been caught out faking images, he has been caught out stealing images, and I intend to post some more videos exposing his antics. We have downloaded his videos and we've taken screenshots and we have the evidence and because of his continued deception I've decided to up the ante and we will be exposing him. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.